Okay, this is custom metal fab um, welder operation 101. So in the intro class in metal fabrication, we pretty much say plug it in, make the settings and adjustments, don't forget to turn the gas on and use it. In this class, I'd like you to have a little bit more of an understanding of how it works, how to maintain it, and um, how to advance operate it, okay? So first thing for a welder, periodically, you should check or inspect the cables. So these have been wound up correctly, which is cool. But I'm going to start down at the base and just run my hand all the way out and make sure there's no open spots, nicks, frays, cuts, or whatever. For the most part, if the copper isn't cut and it's just a rubberized coating, we can wrap it up with a black duct or electrical tape and it's totally fine, still serviceable. Okay, This one's good. Same thing with the work lead. It's got some nicks in it. Part of the reason why I'm such a freak about stuff never being on the floor is because when it is on the floor, it gets cut up, it gets stepped on, it gets rolled over with things. So this is good, okay? Next thing we're going to do is nozzle inspection. So some of you in class may have done this before where you actually remove the outer brass nozzle, take that off and you can see the welding tip. If the nozzle has got impurities in it, spatter and stuff like that, did you touch the screen to focus? Yeah. Good. Then you can use what's called a whelper's pliers. This is a specialized plier to clean that uh, nozzles out. You pinch these together, put it in the end of this and twist, and all of those beads will pop out of there and fall out and you'll get it back to clean, okay? So that happens more often than not, especially if you're welding dirty stuff or you didn't clean the metal enough. Next thing you can do is if the welding, come over here, close close to thank you. If the welding tip's got a lot of, uh, impurities on it, you can clean those off just by working around it like this. The welding tips are copper. What did we just say about dissimilar metals like copper and, and steel? What don't they do? They don't mesh. They don't weld. That's why they use copper tips because you're usually welding with mild steel. So normally they won't get stuck. But if you want to take these off, you can go like this and unthread them if you have to replace them. They thread all the way out. Okay. And I would normally turn the welder on, feed a little wire off, and then clip it. We can replace these tips. Does anybody remember what the diameter of the wire um, is for these little welders? 0.030, does that sound familiar at all? 30 thousandths of an inch. So the, rod, the welding um, wire diameter is 0 0.030 on these. It's 0.035 for the big welders. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. So this goes on and it should be always even or a little bit in front of the welding tip. Okay, The nozzle should be out further so that the welding tip can't contact the metal directly. Okay, uh, let's put a tank on quick. I normally will ask to do this all the time but I wanted to show you again how to do it. These caps should always be on a tank if it doesn't have a regulator and it's not chained to a wall or a welder. Spin the cap off, store it down here, crack the valve open. This is a brand new one. Look at this thing. A brand new tank. Sweet. I'm gonna crack the valve open temporarily. This is just out of habit to clear anything off that might be in there, like dirt, debris, or whatever. It's pretty, pretty loud, okay? I'm gonna do that. I need to twist this a little bit so I can get my regulator facing the right way. It's gonna go on like that. I'm gonna go a little bit more yet. Okay, I want to just, not with oily gloves, make sure that this is clean. This is kind of cool if you can see this. Come close. It's got a sintered brass filter. Essentially, they take a bunch of little brass beads and they crush them together. And the air can flow through it, but a lot of dirt and impurities can't. Sintered brass filters were really common in old school cars that had carburetors. Now we have fuel injection and we use paper filters in line and we never see them. But it used to be a big deal. So you thread this on. It is a um, tapered compression fit. And we want to crank it up pretty tight while keeping, I'm going to tip these back so when we tighten up, they come forward. Okay. Um, regulator pressure. Review. Tank pressure and regulator pressure. Tank pressure is how much is in the tank. 
regulator is how much is going in the line out to your welder. Okay, and the tank pressure is going to be max because this is a full one. Does anybody remember what the regulator pressure is supposed to be? Yeah, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, those are both okay. 15, let's go with that. And that's 15 cubic feet per hour, or in this case, the black numbers on the outside. So I'm going to turn this on, and I can see I got max pressure right here, 2200 PSI, it's a full tank. In order to get pressure into the line, I have to turn the T-handle in. It basically threads in, it pushes a diaphragm back and allows air to flow through. So as I turn this in, you'll see this bump up. Right there I've got 10, right there I've got 15, okay? So I am set gas-wise right now. Last year we had these recorded because if you remember, um, the first couple years, the cords were really short. They were always breaking the ground prongs off. They would barely reach the outlets, okay? They were too short. So we had these recorded, which is nice. On these drop cords, you can only have one welder per outlet or drop cord because there's too much amperage. If there's two welders plugged in, you'll strip the breakers. So if you remember that as well. Last part of this is going to be tough to see, but if you come over here, you'll be able to see a little bit more. And I'm actually going to show you on this welder so everybody can gather around on this side. Uh, Zach, do you want to plug this in? If you can unwind this. Uh, I'm not going to run them both at the same time, so sure you can. You were listening. Well done. John, you can wrap that power cord up on there. All I'm going to do is feed some wire out of this so you can see what's happening inside, but Ethan's going to kind of be your eyes. We'll maybe show you the last part of this video again. Inside here we got a spool of wire and that spool is fed by a little electric motor that drives the wire out through the welding gun. It's also charged at this point too where it's, it's given its electrical current. And we can service this or control, uh, let's say if we have to replace the spool or put the new wire in. Welding tech needs to be cleaned, I'll do this in a second. I'm going to turn this on. Okay, it's feeding wire right now which is good. You can make the connection here what's going on. If I turn my wire speed all the way up to max, pull the trigger, I can see how fast that little gear has to spin in order to spool this out. Okay. To clip this off, not use the table if possible to clip that off. And what I wanted to show you was how this thing works. There is a tensioning bar here. If I pull this off, this flips up, it's spring loaded. If I don't have that down, it can't put any pressure on that drive wheel and push the wire through. This thing right here is just kind of a filter to clean up any, uh, anything that will get caught on there. And this is where our gas gets fed in from the tank into the line. And our electricity comes from these two points right here. Uh, they feed in through this, um, through this wire right here, through the coil. Okay. So that's pretty much the inside. Uh, I'll go one step further and I can take this out of here. Do I want to do that? Sure, why not? But I need a side cutters. John, can you go grab me a side cutters out of the tool cabinet on the right hand side, upper? Does anybody else have any questions about these yet or in review? What I'm going to have you do is just inspect the cords, wrap them up properly. Um, clean out the welding tips, um, go through, we can vacuum these up even a little bit or clean out the insides and we'll wrap up the cords properly, make sure that they're all in working order. Find one? Yeah. Okay. This, that'll work, perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is cut this in here and this can make a mess if it comes flying off of there. So right now this would potentially just uncoil and make a huge mess if I can get it to stay somewhere like there and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, once I take the tension off this, I should be able to grab the wire and pull it out of there. And this would be like if you get to the end of a roll, what do you do? 
Well, we're at the end of the roll. We just put a new roll in. We loaded it in here. We've got to feed this in through this opening here. There we go. And we got to get it to feed in to that coiled wire right there. So this is a little bit tricky. And Ethan, can you come over here so you can see? Okay, so I'm just going to use this to kind of guide it in there. And I need to take my gloves off. Too intricate to do with gloves. Okay, so I got it guided in there like that. Little ways. I'm going to flip this down. Last thing, if, if the uh, wire doesn't want to drive, you can turn this and create more tension on it. There's a spring-loaded setting here. The more I crank this down, the more tension it puts on the drive wheels and the more it'll force it to go through there. So now I can turn this on. I don't have any wire here yet. I want to make sure there's no kinks or coils in this. If it's wrapped up really tight like this and I'm trying to spool the wire out, it'll get stuck in there. So just as a rule to make life easy for the welder, the more you can straighten this out from the start, the better chance it has of making it all the way to the end. for it. I can feel it. Now. Dang it. Uh-oh. Okay, it got stuck. So it hit the end of this. Can't drive right now. What's likely happening is it's all the way up to the end here. And this tip is kind of dirty or bad. So if I take a pliers and loosen this, Now this is electrically charged. I'm gonna go get sign off, but I'll get a little video in. <laughs> you had an accident. He's saying. This is electrically charged, so I have to be conscious of my ground here. If I were to get in between the ground and the wire and pull the trigger, bad deal. So I'm kind of steering clear of that. I should be able to get the tip to feed on. Although this one does seem pretty plugged up and I can see that the end is really mashed. It didn't cut clean. That's probably why it doesn't want to... Oh, the side cutter's messed up. That's part of the problem. Let's try this one. Better? Barely. There we go. So we run these as far as we can with the tips until they are uh, really resistant or they get stuck completely or somebody actually gets welds to stick to them. But if you're having issues with the welder, if it just does not seem to be operating properly, let me know. Okay. Uh, that nozzle can get cleaned out yet, get clipped off. But that is um, <coughs> custom metal fab. Welder Maintenance and Operation 101.